the hour or the day in which then these things will happen. Only the Father in heaven knows these things. But he does tell them, and he wants to underscore, that it is important to be a faithful steward because when he comes, he will judge all his people upon his return. So the stories in each parable of this trio describes a certain and sudden return of an important figure. And one is the owner of a household. He comes back to find out whether or not his servants had been faithful or unfaithful. I remember a time when I was just 16 years old. <coughs> And my mom and dad wanted to take a little vacation without me. Go figure that. <laughs> and so they took a week off. It was during the summer, and I was driving at the time. And my dad said, sir, you take care of the house. It, you know, it's, it, it's yours. But would you please cut the grass before I get back home? It was already a foot or so high. And I haven't done that. It was my responsibility to cut about an acre with a push mower. And I said, Dad, I'll take care of it. Don't you worry about it. <laughs> they were to return on Friday. Well, Thursday evening, after I had gone to the creek and come back, I looked in the, and as I pulled up in the driveway, Dad was out there with a lawnmower cutting the grass, and I told him that I would cut. Now, I had good intentions of waking up early Friday morning and cutting that grass before they came home, but they came home early. I, I, I went to grab the mower to him and said, Dad, I'll get that. I was going to cut it. He said, that's okay. I'll take care of it. You just go in the house. Wow. I was not found faithful upon his return. I had good intentions, but I didn't follow through. I think this is what Jesus is teaching. The owner of the house, hold, the bridegroom is going to return to the shout, and then the master will return. And upon the return of these figures, it became apparent that some people were ready for his return, but others were unprepared for him to come back all together, as in the case of my father. Now each parable of this trio of parables conclude with an evaluation of the people ready or unready. Read the parables by the key figure who is going to return. And the returning figure was the sole evaluator of their deeds. If you'll notice, there's something that he talks about. Next slide, please. He said, so the main points of the first three parables are, if you're writing notes, be faithful to Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. And then be alert for his return, because you don't know when that's going to happen. And then invest your talents for Jesus' kingdom in order to receive the greatest possible reward in life. Now, perhaps one of the reasons Jesus had for telling these four parables together here in Matthew 24 and 25 was for his disciples was to affirm that it is in people's best interest to believe in Jesus. Think about this for a moment. Someone who may have read these parables or heard these parables might hesitate about accepting Christ's offer when they consider the painful consequences of being unfaithful. They might reflect, why assume the risk in being a follower of Jesus? Because if I mess up and fail, it's not going to turn out well for me. 
It's sort of like the attitude that I had as a young adult. Because I always heard about this cosmic battle between Jesus, between God and the devil. You know, sort of like the Job story. And I'm, and I'm like, God, whatever you want to do is okay. You, you, you work it out with the devil and just leave me out of it. I, I, I just soon check out, right? Mm -hmm. It's sort of like, why assume the risk that I might prove to be unfaithful? and endure such pain? Why bother being a believer in the first place? Why not avoid the risk altogether? They might be tempted against following Jesus on the account of possibly suffering those consequences if they fail. However, listen carefully. That's not a good plan. Because in this final parable of the Olivet Discourse, Jesus makes it clear that everyone will be judged either as a sheep, a believer, or a goat, an unbeliever. Okay, it's important then to understand that some teachings of the parable show that the way we treat others is really important because Jesus identifies with everyone. This is important to understand. If people reject or ignore the needs of others, they are rejecting and ignoring God. Are you with me? Amen. Now, I didn't write this. Don't get upset with me. <laughs> That's the main theme here. Likewise, in blessing others, people will also be a blessing to God. Someone once asked me, after reading and studying the parables, does, does this mean that there is salvation, our salvation is based upon our works? Because the parable ties the sheep and the goats' behavior to their eternal destiny. It's easy to walk away assuming that our eternal destiny rests upon what we do or <coughs> fail to do. But that's not really the point Jesus is driving at. If you would go to the next slide, because it says, and John's gospel makes it clear, Jesus said, but to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave them the right to become children of God. Right? But however, we can't miss the important message here, especially as we approach Lent. And this is why this passage is such a wonderful catalyst for us as we start preparing for the Lenten season. Ready or not, it's coming. Especially during the Lenten season, that salvation should transform us into the kinds of people who serve the King by doing good for others. Amen. That's the point of the whole passage. So we can take away, what can we take away from this parable? This is what I want to leave you with. Then next slide, please. There are four quick lessons that we can learn from the story of the sheep and the goats. So if you're taking notes. First, the sheep didn't know what they did. Now, that's impressive. To realize that sheep were surprised by the a turn of the events. Lord, when did we see you hungry? When did we see you clothed? When did we see you in prison? When did we see all of these things? That they, were, they were not serving others to be noticed or to curry favor with the king. They were doing good because it was in their nature to care for others. And that's what the church should be about, the body of Christ. We're not doing good deeds to be recognized by somebody or to get a pat on the back or to gain favor with God. We're just simply doing good deeds because that's the nature of who we serve. Amen. The second thing is little things matter a lot. The king commands the sheep, com commends the sheep for everything from feeding the hungry to clothing the naked. In scripture it says that 
If we just give someone a cup of water, it's like receiving Christ. But in there, he recognizes something simple as giving thirst. Uh, a water to someone is thirsty. The point is that there is no service too small for Jesus to remember. So if you ever think the little things that I do doesn't matter, the little things that I do doesn't uh, are not big and showy and flashy like someone else, what you do, even if it's to give water, is a blessing to the king. Number three, don't leave good undone. I like this. The king's interaction with the goats is the most sobering aspect of a whole parable. It's one thing to celebrate the positive and kind things someone does. It's another thing entirely to realize that the king is paying attention to opportunities to help others that we neglect and fail to capitalize on. <coughs> Here is a key. Don't miss this one. It is a mistake to assume that becoming more Christ-like is merely a case of stopping bad behavior. Now, please stop bad behavior. Right. I'm preaching to myself. The more like Jesus we become, listen carefully, the more our lives are poured out in service to others. The more like Jesus we become is the more your life will be poured out in service to others. Did you get that out there? And then we have to put in the effort. So many of the kindnesses the king mentions in the parables are ones the sheep would have had to sort of go out of their way to perform. Let me ask a question. How many of us here have ever passed the jail and just said, you know what, I'm going to stop and go in and have a visit? I can answer that question. You can't just stop by and go have a visit. Yes, you can. <laughs> You're a preacher, maybe. Yeah, no, you absolutely can. You may have to fill out a little paperwork, but you can. <laughs> yes, you have. Yeah. 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 So we, we have to put in the effort. No one just happens upon someone in prison and stops for a visit. Uh, you, you have to make a plan to spend time with someone in that position. Ask Bill McDermott. He's making yeah. new plans in the Kairos ministry to go to jail. Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah. If you want to be a sheep, then be on the lookout for ways to love people around us. Jesus is saying, become people who do good. I think that's the point. Now, I'm going to say this once more here, concluding because I'm on my last page. <laughs> It's by, <laughs> it's by God's grace that we have been reconciled to God. It's God's grace. There's nothing, absolutely nothing we can do to earn the privilege of becoming God's children. But that doesn't mean that what we do doesn't matter. It does matter. Jesus explained it this way to the Pharisees. He said, Make a good tree good, and its fruit will be good. Amen. Or make a tree bad, and its fruit will be bad. For a tree is recognized by its fruit. In the story of the sheep and the goats, Jesus wants us to understand that our choices reveal the kingdom to whom we belong. So the final lesson is simply this. Our faith in God is confirmed by works of mercy on behalf of the poor and others who need our help. This is a real call from Christ to imitate him, since he likewise emptied himself completely for us. The way of mercy is also the way of the cross. 
else. Emptying ourselves for the sake of others. And it is nothing less than his cross that the Lord asks us to shoulder in love and to show by examples of works and acts of mercy to others. This Advent season would be a good season to follow his way because the life of the, the believer will be whole. Our faith confirmed, our spirit rejoicing, love abounding into glory everlasting whenever we do what we do for the sake of Christ. <clears throat> and Jesus said, do your good deeds so that when others see you, they'll glorify the Father Amen. who's in heaven. Next Sunday, we celebrate the first Sunday of Advent. It will be a good time as we normally think of uh, uh, Advent. Yeah, this, I like that, the parable of the sheep and goats. I, I sort of want to say, which one are you? But that would not be nice. <laughs> You're all sheep. Uh, I mean, anyway. When we think of Advent, and we think of Christmas time, we think of celebrating the birth of Jesus. But you know really what we're celebrating and we're looking forward and anticipating is the hope of Christ's return. Yes. Amen. And what Jesus is saying is that while we're hoping and while we're anticipating and while we're preparing ourselves for his return, don't forget others. And then you'll be prepared for when the master returns, he'll say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter the joy of Let's We give you thanks and praise for all yes, Lord. that you have done for us and in us in Christ. Amen. You have blessed us. You have redeemed us. You have yes. forgiven us. You have filled us with the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. And you have given us new life. Jesus. You call us to deny ourselves, to take up the cross and to follow you. And as we stand on uh, our tiptoes with anticipation and excitement, as the Advent season rushes in, may we look with anticipation for your coming. Yes. And may we be prepared with good works. Amen. May we be looking forward for the bridegroom to come. Yes, Lord. May we be found faithful and have the grass cut when Jesus comes again. And may we use our gifts and our talents and not hide them in a hole. Hallelujah. So that when our master returns, Hallelujah. he'll find the church faithful. Thank you, Jesus. We ask you in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Let's stand together and sing our prayer. And the altars are always open. <laughs>
means for God's kingdom. It just blesses my heart. And it blesses my heart this morning to see these two beautiful young ladies who are our acolytes this morning come and light the candles and to take the word and the spirit of God out. And so I'm grateful for their service. Let them know how much you appreciate it. Yes. Also, we have the opportunities when our children come and lead the service or read scripture. Uh, as it gets into Advent, I'm going to work purposely with Janet, and we're going to include more children uh, into the service, reading scripture, lighting candles, doing a lot of things. And what a blessing that that is. And so, uh, if you would, a uh, few announcements. Uh, let me grab the announcements. <laughs> They're in your bulletin. Please read them. But uh, December the 2nd, painting with uh, Patty uh, and Elisa. Uh, uh, also, Sunday, uh, next Sunday, the first Advent, men will host the second annual Fish Fry for Seniors. That's going to be December the 6th. Uh, and then on Friday, December the 8th, Christmas Party for Education Volunteers. Uh, today, uh, we actually need to start in putting the preparations for our church, hanging the greens. So if, uh, how many have leftover Thanksgiving food in your refrigerator? Turkey, ham, dressing. Uh, will it go home and eat a little bit? Come back at 2.30. <laughs> uh, and we, we need some uh, young bucks as well because... In the past, we've had, uh, it, it takes about a 20 foot ladder, and I, I look up there and there'll be a 70 something year old climbing on the ladder trying to hang greens. We just can't allow that to happen. So if you're 40 and under, we have a job for you. And just remember what you do for the least of these, my brother. Okay? And then uh, the more that can show up, uh, I have pictures of last year when we decorated, so that'll help us to say, oh, okay, this is what we do. And so we'll start at 2.30 if that's all that I have. Go in peace. May the peace of God be with you. Amen. Amen. It's turning dark now. Beautiful Megan. Oh, is that time? Bella has to. That's why you're pretty. She was asking me. Hi, guys. We're done. Happy Sunday. Bye. God bless you. Ikaw ang liwanag sa madilim na daan Ikaw ang siyang tanlaw sa aking kinabukasan Ikaw ang bumabay sa aming pag-aaral Dahil hirap sa buhay, ikaw ay nakaalala Jesus Christ, love and care ministry Kahit di ka nakikita, I always know your love for me Handang tumulong sa mga nangangailangan Sa iyong gabay, kami ay may natutunan Napakabuti ng inyong mga puso Sa mga tulong nyo, meron yung balik sa dulo Laki ng naming pasasalamat Laging dasalang malayo sa kahirapan Jesus Christ, love and care ministry Napakabuti ng iyong puso sa pagtulong di na huli Sana hindi magbago ang iyong pagkatao Tuloy-tuloy mo lang dahil lahat kami saludo Jesus Christ, love and care ministry Napakabuti ng iyong puso sa pagtulong di na huli Sana hindi magbago ang iyong pagkatao Sana hindi magbago ang iyong pagkatao
magbago ang iyong pagkataon Tuloy-tuloy mo lang dahil lahat kami saludo Sa bawat pag-ising o pagtulog Sa katauhan namin ikaw ang humubog Mga pangaral at salita mo sa amin ay tumatak Tinurin mo kami sa mundo na isang anak Di mo pinabayaan sa oras ng kahirapan Binusog din may kagutuman na nararanasan Ikaw ang tanging ina namin kanuman Diyos na ang bahalang magbalik sa iyong kabaitan Mga pangaral mo ang nagsilbi sa aming aral Nagbigay lapis at papel bumubuhit na parang anghel Nagpatayo ng simbahan ko sa pwede naming masilungan Maging takuhan ito yung binabalot ng kadiliman Salita ng Panginoon Jesus Christ, love and good ministry Napakabuti ng iyong puso sa pagtulong di na huli Sana hindi magbago ang iyong pagkataon Tuloy-tuloy mo lang dahil lahat kami saludo Jesus Christ, love and good ministry Napakabuti ng iyong puso sa pagtulong di na huli Sana hindi magbago ang iyong pagkataon Tuloy-tuloy mo lang dahil lahat kami saludo Jesus Christ, love and good ministry Napakabuti ng iyong puso sa pagtulong di na huli na hindi magbago ang iyong pagkatao Tuloy-tuloy mo lang dahil lahat kami saludo Jesus Christ, love and good ministry Napakabuti ng iyong puso sa pagtulong di na huli Sana hindi magbago ang iyong pagkatao Tuloy-tuloy mo lang dahil lahat kami saludo